Working at the transmission where the drive shafts connects, remove the three 18 millimeter drive shaft flex disc fasteners as indicated by the green arrows. Use a pry bar or large flathead screwdriver and lever the drive shaft away from the transmission. You won't need much force to do this. If it won't move, you may have left a bolt in place. Support the drive shaft using a rope or mechanics wire. Disconnect the reverse light switch. It is located on the left side of the transmission. Press the electrical connector wire retainer and pull the connector straight off the switch. Green arrows. Once disconnected, unclip the harness from the mounting clip towards the top of the transmission. Next, remove the oxygen sensor electrical connectors from the mounting bracket. Green arrows. Then pull the wiring harness out of the holders. Yellow arrows. Next, remove the oxygen sensor electrical connectors from the mounting bracket at the right side of the transmission. Green arrows. Once removed, unplug and separate the oxygen sensor connector. Lay them aside and out of the way. Next, remove the shift rod clip. You can unlock it using your fingers and slide the clip off, as indicated by the green arrow. This photo shows the clip you have to remove. Green arrows point to the area you have to unclip before sliding off. Next, remove the shift rod from the selector shaft. Now you have to remove the transmission brace from the transmission, as indicated by the green arrow. There is one at each side of the brace. This shows the left side. Unlock the clip and rotate up. Then slide the clip out of the transmission brace to remove. Green arrow. Repeat this step for the right side brace. Once the clips are removed, push the brace up and away from the transmission. Working at the right side of the transmission, remove the two 13 mm slave cylinder fasteners, green arrows. Then pull the slave cylinder out of the transmission. Tie it aside and out of the way. Remember, do not press the clutch pedal with the slave cylinder removed. It will be damaged. Remove the complete exhaust system from your vehicle. Please see the link at the end of this video for a tech article on exhaust system replacing. Once the exhaust is removed, check that there are no remaining wiring, harnesses, or items connected to the transmission. Working at the bottom of the transmission, remove the two E10 fasteners, green arrows. Then remove the wiring harness bracket from the transmission. You can let this bracket hang. Attached to the ground wire or oxygen sensor connectors. It should be out of your way. Once the two lower bolts are removed, there are a total of eight more that have to be removed. There's three on the left side and four on the right side, and only one starter bolt has to be removed. It is located at the top of the transmission. You will remove these after lowering the transmission. Next, remove the exhaust mounting bracket from the transmission. Remove the two E10 bolts while holding the 13 mm nuts. Remove the bracket from the vehicle, green arrows. Support the transmission with a jack. Attach the jack to the transmission using a chain or a strong strap. Next, remove the six 13 mm transmission mount fasteners, green arrows. Remove the transmission mount from the vehicle. Lower the transmission enough to access the top bolts on the transmission. Working at the left side of the transmission, remove the four bolts. The bolts will be a mix of E10, E12, and E14, as indicated by the green arrows. Throw the aluminum bolts away. You will be replacing them. Working at the right side of the transmission, remove the four bolts. The bolts will be a mix of E12 and E14s this time green arrows. Throw the aluminum bolts away again. You need to replace these bolts. They are single use only. Once all the transmission bell housing bolts are removed, separate the transmission from the engine by wiggling it back and forth. Then lower the jack and remove the transmission from the vehicle. To remove the clutch, remove the six 6 mm Allen bolts from the pressure plate, green arrows. Loosen the bolts in a crisscross alternating pattern. Support the pressure plate so it does not fall when you remove it. To remove the flywheel, remove the six T60 torque bolts from the flywheel, green arrow. 
Loosen the bolts again in a crisscross alternating pattern. Support the flywheel so it does not fall. It is very heavy. If the surface of your flywheel is in good shape, you can leave it installed. Dual mass flywheels cannot be machined, so if the surface is in bad shape, you will have to replace the entire flywheel. To replace the pilot bearing, remove the bearing using a small slide hammer. Note the depth of the bearing before removing, then install the bearing using a bearing driver. Now it's time to install the new clutch kit. You will need a clutch disc alignment tool. Your clutch kit should come with one. The green arrow points to the tool that came with my clutch kit. The yellow arrow points to the BMW tool equivalent. Each one does the same job. I will be using the BMW tool for this procedure, but you can use either. Install and center the clutch disc using the alignment tool, green arrow. Then remove the center bolt from the alignment tool. If you want, you can remove this bolt before aligning the clutch disc. Install the pressure plate on the alignment dowels. Then install six new Allen fasteners, green arrows. Tighten the Allen fasteners until the pressure plate is flush with the flywheel. Check that the pressure plate is flush with the flywheel. Then remove the SAC lock. Mine came out by rotating counterclockwise using a 14 millimeter Allen. Once this lock is removed, the self-adjusting clutch, SAC, will move if it's not against the clutch disc. If it does move and ratchet, you will need additional special tools to reset the SAC feature of the pressure plate. Then torque the six new Allen fasteners. This vehicle had a torque of 25 newton meters. Check the specifications for your vehicle to confirm. Once torqued, remove the clutch disc alignment tool from the clutch disc. You now have to service the items on the transmission bell housing. Remove the throwout bearing by sliding it off the transmission output shaft. Note the orientation when removing. Then remove the clutch fork, yellow arrow, by releasing the spring retaining clip, green arrow. Then remove the clutch fork from the bell housing. To replace the throwout guide bushing, remove the four 10 millimeter fasteners then remove the guide bushing from the transmission. Install a new guide bushing, then install and tighten the fasteners. Install the new clutch fork if you are replacing it, or reinstall the old one. Then slide the new throwout bearing over the guide bushing and align it with the clutch fork. Now it's time to reinstall the transmission. Apply spine grease to the spines on the transmission output shaft. Your clutch kit should come with the correct grease. Jack the transmission into place, then line up properly and slide the transmission shaft into the clutch. You'll have to wiggle the transmission to engage the shaft. Once engaged, slide the transmission forward until the bell housing is flush with the engine. Install the bell housing fasteners and tighten. Be sure to replace all the aluminum bolts. Once the transmission bolts are tightened, install the transmission mount and secure the transmission in place. Now install the remaining items, reverse of the removal procedure. Be sure to tighten all fasteners correctly and properly route all wiring harnesses. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.